The new Giant Tree of Life poster featuring every new Gala Pokemon is available now. Pick one up before Christmas as a gift to yourself or to a friend by using the link in the description and thank you for supporting the channel, as well as those of you supporting on Patreon, such as the Nerd Therapist. Thank you. Hello Pokemon Masters, my name is Bucky Batobi and thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you've been enjoying your adventure around the Gala region. I'm giving this video a little spoiler warning because this video is about the legendaries of the Gala region and not just the legendaries but also ancient Pokemon that were created there as well as the darkest day and the true nature behind it. The Darkest Day, which was all about, and yep, last chance for spoiler warnings, the legendary Pokemon Eternatus, or perhaps another legendary Pokemon that we may have seen in Hammerlock. Before I get into that though, I gotta say, Eternatus is looking pretty neat in its Gigantamax form, clawing its way onto the Tree of Evolution. Look, look, here. The Last Shaman, as well as a number of other artists, really talented and have come together to make this poster. It is absolutely my favorite version of any poster that I've ever done here on the channel. The artists that I've worked with are absolutely incredible. The Last Shaman, by the way, is my girlfriend, and you will be seeing her pretty soon in a video, if not already by the time this video comes out. Anyway, if you'd like to support the channel, please check out the poster. It is linked in the description. Okay, let's talk about the Darkest Day. The Darkest Day is an event that we can learn about in the Dragon Vaults of Gala. It is a day in Gala's history that is named metaphorically for the terror that it brought to the people of the Gala region, and also literally because of the black clouds that surrounded the day. Throughout the story, we learn that the Darkest Day came to an end when two young heroes wielding the powers of the legendary sword and shield Pokemon took on whatever the threat was. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, it is the job of Sonya, the professor's granddaughter, to research the Darkest Day and tell you everything you need to know, including the fact that the reason that there were so many black clouds and storm clouds was because of the presence, the new presence in the Gala region, of Dynamax and Gigantamax Pokemon. It's these giant Pokemon and the storm clouds that they create that caused the Darkest Day to be so dark. And we learn about the day through the point of view of the heroes, and the day began for them when they saw a wishing star falling from the sky. Wishing stars are an item in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and they are intrinsically linked to the nature of Dynamaxing Pokemon. You find them in the game, and you throw them into dens across the wild area. These dens then become concentrations of Dynamax energy, Gigantamax energy, and that is where you can do your raids and max raid battles. The heroes, of course, won the day, and ultimately became crowned the kings of the region. They became royalty. Possibly there was already a royal family, but maybe they were sadly uh, defeated in this big battle against the giant Pokemon. Pokemon, and so we needed two new kings to replace them, replace them, and that is what happened on that day in Gala. The two heroes became the two kings of the Gala region. And this happened based on the clues that are presented to us around about 20,000 years ago. And we know that humans existed in the Pokemon world 20,000 years ago because of Claydol, a Pokemon from the Hoenn region, supposedly, that is said to, uh, having come to life from statues and dolls made 20,000 years ago. The same date mentioned in Eternatus's Pokedex entry when it's said to have shown up, and Eternatus is somehow also linked to Dynamax Pokemon. It is, after all, the biggest Pokemon, and its Gigantamax form is obviously a very big part of the game, but I don't believe that Eternatus was actually the threat that happened 20,000 years ago, just that it fell to Earth. See, across the Gala region, and specifically the wild area, there are these little dens, right, that appear to me to have been the original impact sites of the various wishing stars that crash landed, but this isn't the wishing star that the hero saw fall to Earth. No, rather they would have seen something bigger. The wishing star or egg that Eternatus seems to have hatched out of that is underneath the Hammerlock City uh, castle. This is the object that Chairman Rose was, tr was trying to get energy out of. Kind of reminds me of the Void Ship from Doctor Who. Anyway, it's underneath the castle now, but I suspect it may have actually created what we now know as the Dusty Bowl in the uh, Pokemon Wild. This is where the majority of Dynamax energy and these little raid dens seem to exist. As if it's a giant comet or wishing star falling to Earth with various fragments around it. And further afield from that, other fragments which will have landed elsewhere in the Gala region. In fact, it is said that all of the gyms of the Gala region, apart from Spike Muffs, are built on top of these spots. This was a meteor shower of epic proportions. I do believe that the Hammerlock Castle still existed in those times. In fact, it is said that in ancient times, the Hammerlock Castle was the center of the Gala region. At that time, towns like Motorstoke just simply wouldn't have existed. In fact, it's most likely, likely that Motorstoke was uh, invented in the Industrial Revolution of the Pokemon world. 
as a result of mining from the two mines either side of it. The oldest looking towns in Gala are Sir Chester, Hammerlock, and perhaps some of the uh, little villages around, like in the starting area. Every other town and settlement was likely built around these spots where the Dynamax Pokemon, or the, the Wishing Star Shards, landed. But Hammerlock was there 20,000 years ago, and you can see on its walls all of the damage that it has taken from the various battles, likely with giant Pokemon. But then these two heroes showed up. Just like you do in the games from the starting town, carrying with them the power of the Sword and Shield Legendary, and they were able to take out all of these Gigantamax and Dynamax Pokemon. And possibly it was them that moved the Egg of Eternatus underneath the castle, maybe with the help of a, a giant dub trio, or a number of Diglets, as are being heralded in a nearby town that is also very relevant to them. You see, it is in this town that we find this statue of the heroes and the legendary Pokemon. It has been hidden away from the world behind a mural, and in fact, when you go to the Dragon Vaults in Hammerlock, you learn the story of the Darkest Day, but a piece of it is missing. That piece is in Sir Chester, the town where the heroes supposedly bathed after their big battle in the Hot Springs. And that part of the legend seems to depict exactly what this statue is depicting. Two heroes and an ancient shrine. The shrine where in the game you find the legendary Pokemon. But why was this hidden? Was it by accident? Well, I'm thinking no, because in newer cities, more modern cities like Motorstoke, there is a statue of a legendary hero carrying a sword and a shield with no mention of any Pokemon. Now, it's possible that over the ages, the legend has been filtered and told as, as a story after a story after a story and has become the story of one hero carrying a sword and a shield with no Pokemon, but I think the truth has been hidden on purpose. Because the Darkest Day is a massive event. The crashing of these meteorites all across the wild area, as well as the destruction of many towns, villages, the watchtower in the wild area, which is now a spawning point for ghost Pokemon. This was a big day, and these Dynamax Pokemon caused a lot of destruction. In fact, until the legendary Sword and Shield dog with their trainers turned up, no one was able to stop these Pokemon. Potentially, the royalty of this castle was wiped out, leaving a spot for our two new heroes. It's possible the region was also already at war with itself, as depicted by the route connecting Hammerlock to Surchester, but that is a different story. The two legendary Pokemon, Zushian and Zamazenta, which are depicted, by the way, in the wall behind the Surchester Baths, these two Pokemon are more powerful than Dynamax Pokemon, and we see that in the game when we use them to take on Eternatus. Two Pokemon like that would make incredible allies, and certainly they did on the Darkest Day. They would also make for good weapons. As the very descendants of that royal family realized, they would make for incredibly powerful Pokemon that could keep anyone in power. And so those Righteous of Hearts decided to uh, remove any imagery of the shrine, the, uh, the scroll and the statue hide them away from the world, try to burn, destroy, and bury them, and replace that story with a different story, one with a false idol, this to protect the secret of Zashian and Zamazenta's location. These Pokemon clearly don't like to be disturbed. And to bring this full circle and help protect their secrets, they hid the uh, statue of themselves at the shrine with the legendary Pokemon, they hid it behind a wall guarded by four pillars that have on them clay dolls. These heads are the heads of clay dolls, and clay doll has been pottery brought to life, whether it's a statue or a doll. And in fact, the whole town of Stoke-on-Tide is known for its mysterious pottery. In fact, it's the only place where you can get an authentic Poltegeist pot for some of that authentic Galarian tea. Sorry, break the illusion, this is coffee. But the point is, I don't think Claydol having been brought to life 20,000 years ago and Eternatus having fallen to Earth 20,000 years ago are a coincidence at all. Especially because these Claydol uh, kind of relics can be seen guarding the statue. It seems very likely to me that Claydol was created for this exact purpose. Claydol now exists across the entire Pokemon world, protecting all sorts of ancient sites where there's legendary and powerful Pokemon. And here it's being used as a sentinel, as guardians against anyone that might try to wrongfully obtain the information about the location of the legendary Pokemon. But I'm still left with a question. This theory or history lesson of Gala, while it does tie everything together quite nicely, still leaves me with the question of why? Why did the ancient heroes feel the need to hide the truth? I mean, yes, it might just be because they had other members of the family and they had descendants that they knew they could see into the future and they knew were gonna try and come after that power. 
That's possible. Or maybe it had something to do with Eternatus. Eternatus, in my opinion, did not exist 20,000 years ago. I think it fell to Earth, and I think it was in this orb. It's Chairman Rose who has woken up Eternatus. It is this Pokemon's very crashing to Earth that seems to have caused the Dynamax phenomenon to happen, and maybe by burying it under the castle, that somehow suppressed the power. Eternatus is a part poison type, and Claydol is psychic type, so maybe Claydol was uh, developed as a Sentinel for that reason. But something doesn't add up to me there. I don't think many people would have known about the Pokemon inside the orb. They would have just seen the orb and realized that it was causing all of these Dynamax Pokemon to happen. Perhaps at the time, the people of the Galar region were just creating armies of Golem-like Pokemon. You can see, as well as Claydol, Golurk across the region, and Stonjourna is native to the region. Being covered in ancient runes, and guess what? You find it near Surchester. So perhaps these armies were being created to deal with the Dynamax Pokemon threat. Or maybe there was another Pokemon that we just don't know about yet. As of the moment, we haven't learned anything about any mythical Pokemon of the region. But something that has seemed very, very odd to me is the very fact that Hammerlock has an area called the Dragon Vaults. What dragon? I mean, yes, Eternatus is part dragon type, but again, it's not very dragon-like. And actually, when you look at the structures across Hammerlock, all this imagery of dragons, these dragons are not the kind of dragons that Eternatus represents. In fact, on the very top of the Dragon Vaults, there is what appears to be not quite so much a dragon, but a basilisk. And this is a kind of Pokemon that I wanted for a long time. I've mentioned it on the channel this year. A half dragon snake, reptile, and half chicken, this would be a dragon and possibly poison type Pokemon because basilisks have the power to poison and paralyze opponents. So perhaps there's another legendary Pokemon, a piece of the puzzle that we're missing here. Something that the heroes needed to protect Zacian and Zamazenta against. Something even more powerful than Eternatus, or maybe it really was just for Eternatus, or maybe it was for any descendants or other people that would wish to have the power of these Pokemon that are stronger than Dynamax Pokemon. I don't know, I feel like there's a piece of the puzzle missing here, and maybe it's a piece that we will discover in an enhanced version or middle version of the game. For now though, this is the history of the darkest day, and a little theory on the origins of Claydol. Pokemon theories are actually a lot of fun. In fact, it was a big part of how and why I started the channel, and it's pretty obvious to anyone who's watching the channel that uh, doing in-depth Pokemon theories like this is something that's become harder to do over time because, because I've sifted through all of the games and I've looked at every big bit of lore and I've asked every question I thought I wanted to ask. That said, right before Sword and Shield came out, I just got looking at the Kanto region and started asking a bunch of questions. Questions that I've always wanted to know the answers to, and maybe a few more Pokemon theories are starting to pop up. I'm hoping to do many more in the new year, so I hope that you'll join me for that. And also, I hope those of you who are interested in my videos would support them by checking out my new Tree of Evolution poster. It has every Pokemon on it, and I've already theorized as to why all of the Pokemon will go where they would go. I believe my full video with all the Gala Pokemon is just just about to come out. So please do check the link in the description, get it for yourself for Christmas maybe or for the holidays. And of course, saw high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a 